We're going to now switch gears a little bit and talk about unsupervised models. And so before we've talked about supervised models like classification, where you have some input x, you take that out, and you get an output y. And you know what the x's and the y's are in terms of classification or regression. And now we're going to just take a bunch of data x, and you're going to ask an algorithm to find what's going on inside those data. What are the hidden z's that make up the data that explain what's going on? And one way of doing this is clustering. So today what we'll talk about is what is the problem of clustering, and we'll talk about one way of solving the clustering problem called k-means clustering. And then we'll move on to a more probabilistic way of talking about clustering called Gaussian mixture models, which is an extension of k-means to a probabilistic setting. So in classification, you have labels. And, and so, for example, you have red points and blue points, and you need to find some line that splits the red from the blue. Do you do a good job of separating the red from the blue? But in clustering, there could be many different answers to the problem. So you could divide the data into two clusters, and maybe that makes sense. You could divide the data into uh, four clusters, maybe that makes sense, and maybe three clusters make sense as well. And it's not so clear what the right answer is, so it becomes a little bit harder to tell whether you're doing a good job. And this is actually one of the things that I'm interested in from a research perspective. Given these clusters, how do you know whether you've done a good job or not? And in my opinion, I think this often depends on human intuition and human knowledge. And so how do you measure that in a systematic way? We won't get into that question too much in this course, but it's one of the things that I'm interested in. So clustering is used for a variety of applications, from uh, genomics to political science to uh, industrial applications like uh, recommender systems where uh, Netflix divides up all of the movies into clusters, and one of those clusters corresponds to action horror, and if you like one movie in that cluster, you'll like other movies in that cluster. One application of clustering is in computational biology, where you have all of your genes in an organism, and they respond to different experiments in different ways. If you put similar genes together, you can get a sense of what genes act in similar ways, and thus maybe find connections between different genes. Even within the field of biology, you can take a step back, and instead of looking at individual genes, you can look at, say, the entire brain. And you can try to cluster what activation signals are uh, similar to each other, put those into the same cluster, and perhaps do a better job of understanding what parts of the brain are linked together. Looking at social media is another place where clustering is very important. One of the things that people often do when they're trying to understand what's going on in social media is they cluster similar things together. And if you do that on Twitter or Facebook, something like that, you discover communities. And those communities often behave in similar ways. And you can discover what a particular community is talking about at a given time. So clustering helps you make sense of a very, very large data set, condense it down into a small number of clusters that make sense, and then you can analyze those clusters individually. Recommender systems are another place where clustering is useful. You can discover similar products and similar users. You can cluster both of those, and then similar products can be recommended to similar users. Also in a business setting, market segmentation is a very common use of clustering. And often, when you are a company, you want to send out tailored advertisements to specific people. And so you want to send one kind of advertisement to a first-time customer, another advertisement to a customer who's been with the company a long time. Perhaps you want to segment on the kind of household, whether they have kids or not. You can use clustering to find those different segments and then send out specific advertising to those groups. And if it works in advertising, you can also do that in voter analysis. Uh, politicians want to send out specific messages to specific kinds of voters. This is called micro-targeting, and you can use clustering to discover the different types of voters that exist in the world and send out special political advertisements to those groups so that they will like your candidate more. 
So now that we've talked about clustering at a high level perspective, let's now talk about two specific kinds of clustering algorithms, k-means clustering and Gaussian mixture models.